the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Lord. Praise, the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Here. So Lord. In the house of the Lord here tonight to worship and magnify our Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord, that we're here again tonight to magnify, to get back to where we need to be with you, Lord, to worship you. 
freely in this house. Amen. Come on, let's worship, let's magnify. Hallelujah, let's press. Let's keep going forward. We're going to press it just somehow. We're going to push ourselves. We're going to get back to where God needs us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's worship in this house. Hallelujah. Sister Natalie sings. Let's worship. Let's give it our everything. Let everything go. It's all about you, Jesus. Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. It's always been you, Jesus.
worship before. I feel like a train. I think I can. I think I can. Pay attention to me. You watch me? You, you sure? I think I can. I think I can. They say when you're concentrating on something, you can do stuff you couldn't do before. I think I can. Where was the worship before? Where was it before? I think I can. I think I can. Where was the worship before? I think I can. Where'd it go? Jesus, I'm not, don't sing. Don't sing. I couldn't imagine you were in there. I 
stood in the mansion, you were in tears. Jesus, I love you because you came. I couldn't imagine. Because you came, I couldn't imagine if you were in there. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Because you came, Jesus, I love you, I love you, Jesus, I love you, Jesus, I love you, I love you, because you came. Because you came, Jesus, I love you. Because you came, I couldn't imagine you were Without that robe, man, the anointing of God does things you can't argue with. Go ahead, go ahead, do that push up test. Tell me if I can push my toes up. Push, push it back down.
Zion is if we'll let God be God of our lives in this church, there is nothing He can't do. Thank you, Lord. I'm still preaching. God doesn't do a bunch of miracles for us to say, okay, we've had church. No, we, we just started. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, some folks don't know what they're missing. Hallelujah. I trust in God, my Savior, the one who can never fail. He can never fail. I bet you some of y'all only between, uh, uh, what's that? Uh, share. I'm getting the rest of it back. Be patient. <laughs> Some of y'all be like, it's okay, service. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, y'all should see the video. God healed my pastor when he began to worship him. Did you see that happen? Wasn't that the coolest thing ever? I was like, I could feel that. Wait, I couldn't feel that a minute ago. Wait, I could move that that way. I mean, and then I thought I was gonna yeah, I saw drown. That. I saw that too. But you know what I realized? You know what helped me? When I went to fall, I picked my leg up and stopped myself. You know the leg that don't move? <laughs> So I didn't go in. Maybe I need to be re I don't know. I trust in God. He heard the answer. And he heard the answer. I saw the Lord. And he heard
something from God. Hello? God is speaking and some of you are so afraid to let God move in your life because of what you've been told in the past. I thought you were done with the lies. Amen? I thought you were fed up with the enemies. Ways. Come on, Pastor. I am. Yes, sir. Amen. Pastor, why God wait so long? <laughs> Trade your places and then ask yourself that question. Don't you understand our God is an overwhelmingly 
loving, merciful, perfect, and patient God. Yes, yes. He does things on His timing. Yes, he corrects us in His timing. Amen. I didn't do anything recently. Well, what'd you get away with last week? What you get? What you get away with a couple of weeks ago? How patient has God been with you? I know He's been mighty, mighty patient with myself. Yeah. So how patient has He been with you? Hallelujah. Well, I feel good enough to preach hard. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter two again. Good chapter. Hey, did y'all teach on this recently? On a podcast or anything? I don't know. First Corinthians chapter 2. We're starting with a verse you hadn't heard in a long time. Verse number 1. Verse number 1 says, in And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellence of speech or wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. All right. I came not with excellent speech or wisdom declaring unto you the testimony of God. Why? Because I determined not to know anything among you. I don't need to know your dirt. God's pretty good at telling me what he needs to tell me. Amen. All I needed to Was this one thing, Jesus Christ and Him crucified? That, that's what I need to know. Are you one of them folks that know Jesus Christ and Him crucified or not? Are you one of the folks that know Jesus Christ and Him crucified or not? I need healing. I don't care. I, I, do you know Jesus Christ and Him crucified or not? Yes. Yes. I'm very anointed. I don't care. Do you know Jesus Christ and Him crucified or not? Yes. I got a great shout. It's irrelevant. Do you know yes. Jesus Christ crucified right. or not? Why do I need to know Jesus Christ and Him crucified? Because the crucifixion is what gives you life. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. If you don't know Jesus Christ and Him crucified, you got nothing. Amen. I don't care if you can walk up and breathe on somebody and they pass out with the joy or the shout or the cry or the anointing or speaking in tongues. It's irrelevant. If you don't know Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Yes, Amen. 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 So tonight, I don't care your talent. Tonight, I don't care your anointing. Tonight, I don't care your opinion. Tonight, I don't care your biblical knowledge or your Prius. I, I don't care your, your level of, of, of growth. In the, I don't care about anything else. I want to know if you know Jesus Christ and if crucified or not. Praise God. Amen. Somebody open that door. 
Praise God. How relevant is it tonight that I'm preaching on this message? Getting back to business. Getting back to business. Amen? Amen. Brother Madison, pray. Wait. Pray with an anointing you have not prayed with before. Pray with a Holy Ghost authority you have never prayed with before. What I'm asking you to do is reach up and touch the feet of Christ and pray over this people. Lord, we give you the praise, the glory, you alone are worthy of all the glory, the honor, the worship, the praise. We thank you, God, for the spirit we've felt so far in the service. We thank you, Lord, for what you've done, what you're going to do. Lord, tonight, in this message right now, I pray, God, that you would anoint the, the heart, the mind, and lips of Pastor Daniel, that he would speak with authority on the unction of the Holy Ghost, and that this people today... Tonight, we'll lend their ear not just to understanding, not just to know what he's talking about, but to, to receive it, to apply it, to learn from it, to grow from it, God, that we may know you and you crucified, that we may get closer to you, that we may go deeper in you, that we may tread deeper waters in your spirit, God, that we may come to know you like we never had before. In the name of Jesus, reach down, be a, let there be a spirit of understanding upon this people. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. My turn. Stand there and pray whatever you want to do. Either get in the realm of the anointing or watch from the sideline. Lord, I'm praying for a new and refreshed anointing upon this man of God right now. Lord, I am asking you to give direction to give wisdom, to give knowledge, to give truth. I'm asking you to impart to him right now the anointing that he has never known, that he has longed for, that he has yearned for, that he has sought after, that when he speaks, it will kill the very needs of the people that are around him, the anointing that will work with him. Then it will shiver down the spines of the people. And they know, not that they are in the presence of the Lamb of God, but they are in the presence of God's man. I ask you in the name of Jesus, Lord, purge the heart and the mind together. Purge the heart and the mind together. These two shall be one for your glory. These two shall be one for your honor. These two shall be one for your purpose. In the name of Jesus. But in the midst, let him be the father. And most of all, let him be the husband. That not only he desires to be, but that he has to be. For these things must come to pass for him to be the man of God. We trust in you. We acknowledge you. Even in his appointment, let it be, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In your name, Jesus, we be praised and worship. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. You be seated if you'd like. I want to know what getting back to business means. Getting back to business is simple. I'm not impressed with what you want and where you want to get in the spirit. Not that I don't love you. Not that I don't want you to grow. It's not that I don't want you to have an anointing with you that shivers down the spines and weakens the knees and buckles the heart and makes the eyes break out with tears or, 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 the, or the mind begin to rumble with a little bit of fear because thus saith the Lord is in the presence. Yes. Right. Y'all go back me up. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. They back you up. Well, I'll, I'll make you get up here and not come back me up. <laughs> Look at you stopping today. I was just totally impressed in the Holy Ghost. She's going to tear the floor up. I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> She's stopping on the devil's nose. He's falling. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. 
See, you forgot where you are in Jesus. Because every gift you want, every anointing you crave, every moving of the Spirit you long for, is irrelevant lest you know Christ Jesus and Him crucified. I don't care what title you hang above your head or you want to have hanging above your head. I don't care what position in the church you hope to have one day. I don't even care what prayer line you long to have. I don't care what anointing you hope to possess. I, I, I don't care how close to God you think you want to get. It is absolutely irrelevant to have or to get anywhere you think you want to have or get to any place you think you want to get unless you acknowledge Jesus Christ himself and him crucified. Yeah. And here's the falter. We falter because we get ahead of God on his timing. Ooh, I feel the calling to this field. I feel the calling to that field. I feel the anointing in this situation. God uses me in intercessory. God used me in the healing ministry. God used me in the faith ministry. God uses me in, 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 in being able to know things about people and see their laundry. And, and it's the it's wisdom and knowledge and, and it just pours out of me. Congratulations, I'm not impressed. Right. Right. Pastor, that's what you do. I'm not impressed. You shouldn't be either. Come on. You should be impressed if I know Christ Jesus and Him crucified. Amen. You should be able to know I'm one of you because I know Christ Jesus and Him crucified. I should know that you're part of me because you know Christ Jesus because of Him crucified. I should be able to know that we can walk together and I don't have to worry about me telling you what's troubling me and your gossiping mouth going over and telling somebody else. I don't have to worry about something bothering and troubling me and you taking your gossip mouth and going to tell the preacher or the church across town. I shouldn't have to concern myself with the garbage of somebody else. I don't need their garbage. I don't want to hear their garbage. We've got enough of our own garbage, but that's just it. We know it's garbage and we're throwing it out. So if we're throwing it out, why are you holding on to it? Why is it you still sharing the garbage that ain't none of your business? Why are you still holding the gossip? Your ears weren't supposed to hear in the first place. You know why? Because you're a gossiper. And somebody added on to it. You know, that's called tailbearing. You know why you know it? Because you're a tailbearer. Oh, you know what happened in my past? Do you know? Do you, have you ever heard about my past? That's right. It ain't none of your business. <laughs> <laughs> then why is other people making it theirs? Come on, boy. Come on. Good. Yeah. Yes, sir. You know what I tell people about your past? I said, listen up. This is going to be juicy. It's under the blood. Of Jesus. It's under the blood of Jesus. Don't you know the past is under the blood of Jesus? And you can't go back, you can't go back to war. You gotta understand when you start sharing people's garbage and people's gossip and people's past and people's hurts and people's pains, the only problem is you, not anybody else. The only issue is you, not anybody. I said Jesus has come to wash it away by his blood. It is under the blood. It has been buried. It has been thrown as far as the east goes to the west. And you think you got a right to raise it up. Quick, resu resurrect it for me. If you can't sit in your seat and resurrect your hanky, you got no business resurrecting somebody else's past. Yes, sir. Oh, oh, yeah. All right. Amen. Good. 
it's under the blood. Do you know why a preacher's got a right to walk up and say, I know this man and this woman are not only man and woman of God and they've got children of God. I didn't say they didn't have things to work through. I didn't say their kids weren't a little spunky. You know what I did say? He's a man, she's a woman of God. They've got godly children. Amen. 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 You know how I know that? I know that by how they pray, how they praise, how they worship, how they're committed to the house of God, how they're committed to the things of God, how they're committed to the kingdom of God, and I know that by their ways. But I also see their spirit. Humility will take you where your mouth will never get you. I'll say that again for the people in the back. I said, humility will take you where your mouth can never get you. The reason humility can is because when you are humble, God takes you there. But when you run your mouth to get you there, you have to know somebody. The only people I got to know is Jesus. I don't know who anybody else thinks they are. Jesus will set you up. Jesus will shut you up. Yes, sir. Right. He'll pick you up. He'll pick you down. There's nobody else that can do it. Let me tell you something. I might be the pastor of this church, but no amount of authority, no amount of pressure, no amount of rebellion I could ever offer into somebody else's life will lift them up above what Christ wants them lifted. If Christ don't want you there, get out of the way. Get thrown a little hissy fit because you didn't get what you thought you deserved. You didn't get the position, the authority, the title, or the extra zero on your salary. Come on. Come on. I got two extra zeros last year. Yes, sir. I'm up to eight zeros. <laughs> Y'all can't take it away. <laughs> Let me ask you something. Why is it you're wailing before God and you want Him to change your circumstances, but you haven't changed your mouth? Right. All right. That's good. And yeah, I'm still sugar We ain't got there yet. <laughs> Why is it you can go on and you have a problem every other day? Let me tell you something. If you're in Jesus, you don't have a problem every other day. You give them to Jesus every day, and Jesus takes care of the problem. The reason you got a problem every day or every other day is because you took your faith, you put it in your drawer for a rainy day for a bigger issue. You have become the bigger issue. Because every day for you is a rainy day. Nobody wants to live around you because there's too much mold and mildew growing. That was so cool. Do it again. You take that for granted till you can't do it. You do. Start you. you take a whole lot for granted till you can't feed yourself and you can't get in and out of it with yourself without waiting for 17 things to help you walk again. Wait for your children to hand your things to My God. serve. You've forgotten where you came from. You've forgotten who your God is. Right. His name is Jesus Christ. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. You missed the mark. You stopped listening to the voice of God. You stopped obeying the word of God, and you think you're going to heaven. Help us, Jesus. Who are you to tell me I'm not going to heaven? I'm the pastor. Get ready. <laughs> if you ain't living this book yes, you ain't going to where the book talks about yes, and if you're doing everything the book tells you not to do honey 
You should have read it a whole lot harder and you should have obeyed it a whole lot more because you ain't getting there any more than anybody else. It's a heaven or hell life. It's a heaven or hell issue. You are either getting into heaven or you ain't. Which way are you going? Who did you choose? What direction are you headed? I'm going to heaven. You can get with me or you can get out of my way. Yes, sir. Amen. You know what that means? Because some of y'all ain't men, but some of y'all ain't willing to do the work. Sis, I'm going to call a 30-day fast for this church. You have any idea how many people just gulped? You know why? It's not because it's a 30-day fast coming up, because they had no plan on doing it. Oh, I want to go to heaven. Oh, God told the preacher to put us on 30-day fast. I guess uh, I'll do a couple of them so God knows I love it. Oh. I'll say at least, I mean, you know, hey, if I get up five more minutes before work, you know, God, God will know that I'm serious. Isn't it funny? You didn't take away phone time. You just took away a little sleep because that phone time is too important to you. Internet is too important. If I don't get to see some of my comedy, I get cranky. How about you get a little whole more to Jesus? Because you ain't nothing but a crank in the first place. Yeah. Oh. Oh. oh, that's all they ever do. I know that's all they ever do. God knows what's all they ever do. That's why I got the message. Surprise! Yeah. Yeah. Who knew? Oh, wait, I did. I don't have to come. I, to, I literally have people say, I think he has cameras in our house. First of all, creepy. Yeah. <laughs> really, really creepy. Second of all, I don't need no radio transmission from you. I got one from him. Yeah. He's got satellite, internet, in net, out net, sub net. Jesus had the first text. Right there. He made the first no, he made the first telephone call. Moses. Y'all think these people running around here sitting on fire on the first? No, nope, Jesus did it first. Moses. You didn't tell me you're gonna set the place on fire to get my attention, God. I wonder if God starts setting your things on fire as you start paying attention. Oh, 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 oh. Right into that, wow. didn't you? Yeah. See, some things God wants you to burn out of your life, and you're too busy trying to spit on it. Oh, you know why? You've left your first love. Oh, he's going to preach one of them. You didn't get it from a title? Getting back to business. I'm talking about the business you were a part of before you got into your current business. The trouble you should have stayed out of, but you decided to go into, and you think you and God are cool. I'm trying to use hit words for you young people. <laughs> We smooth together. You're bumping God's road. You need to level out. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's good. See, I, I can speak the language. I have no clue what I'm talking about. Yeah. Don't want to. I'd rather you learn to speak God's language than me learn to speak your language. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Don't you understand the Bible defines itself. We do not need the world to define it for us. And that's the problem. We are using definitions that the world uses. I don't need Webster. I need Bible. I don't need Webster. I need Jesus. That's all I ask. He defines what I believe, what I think, what I feel, how I feel, where I'm headed, where I'm going. He defines me. What's he, who did, who, who, he made me. Why wouldn't he define me? Don't look up definitions. Look up biblical. Oh, 
definition. Well, how do I do that? If you've got to look up every scripture that talks about it, do you know the definition? Yeah. Or definitions, because some situations yeah. must have several definitions. Yes, yeah. right. Amen. By the way, all of you guys who are wondering how God works, let me explain it to you. You listening? God looks down. There's something. He's troubling God. God looks down, and this is the way God works. You better write it down. You better learn it. You better get in your Abdul Abdul Glada, and you better store it there for a long, long forever. Okay? You lose every other memory. Don't forget Jesus. Not that you could. The Holy Ghost will remind you of all things. Hello? Amen. Don't lose the Holy Ghost. You won't lose the memory of Jesus. Ooh, that hurt. Right. You still with me? Yes. yes. There are two ways God will always communicate when he's frustrated with you. Number one is, I, God, am upset. Who knew? And he will explain to you what you've done or what you're doing and he will give you a way to fix it. Yes. Imagine that, a fair God. Who knew? Yeah. Oh wait, we always knew. Number two, if he will say, if you choose not to do this, then I will bring about this. And this is never that. The that is the blessings of God. If you'll do what he asks you to do, he's going to do that. Yeah. But if you disobey God, he's going to do this. Right. And this is always in the negative. Yeah. Remember what he told Israel? If you'll serve me and you'll commit to me and you'll keep my covenant, I will bless you and all of your generations. So I'll bless you with this. But if you don't serve me and you break the covenant that I've made with you, the commitment that I've put in you, and the, and, and, and the hard work and the love that I have given you, if you throw it under the rug, if you hide it from people, oh, Christian, I'm no Christian. You need me to say a cuss word so you know? I can say some Peter, dude. I can justify Peter cussed. I, I, I can justify looking at a woman the wrong way. David did it. I believe right there the scripture would say, Thou fool. God would call you that. I wouldn't call you that. I'd call you stupid. What do you think, Pastor? I think you're stupid. And an idiot, too. And that's my nice side. So you're a stupid idiot, and I don't even like it. And that's me being nice. Imagine how God's being. And God says, if you keep this, I'm going to give you this. But if you take that, I'm going to give you that. Do you want this? Or do you want that? Do you want my blessing? Do you want to be able to walk with me and talk with me every single day of your life? By the way, let me wake you up. You ready for this? Do you know you have it better than Adam and Eve? They had to wait till the cool of the evening for God to come down and walk with them. You get to wake up and you're already walking. That's right. Oh, I don't think that hits you. I, I don't. I, I wouldn't have got this would hit you. I mean, 
something is moving, the second your eyes open, you get to walk with God right there forward throughout your day. The very millisecond, your, the, the, the very conscience of your mind says, I am awake, Jesus says, and so am I, and I've been waiting for you. We're going to have a great day together. You get to walk with me all day long. You get to talk with me all day long. We get to walk hand in hand, arm in arm. You can touch me anything. You can go everywhere. We, you can learn everything. Why? Because I am the Holy Ghost and I live inside of you. This is that. Now listen to me, because I just seen what the devil did. We're going to spin his Cheerios. Come on. Yes, sir. The devil just walked up. The devil just walked up. And he told somebody in here, oh, your past. Your past. Your past. Uh, he's such a, a stupid actor. He, he would not even be in a B movie. He'd be like negative F. Uh, your past. If Jesus buried it, Digging, did you do just now to dig it up? The devil just trying to remind you of something that's under the blood. He can only remind you of something under the blood that Jesus reminds you it's under the blood. This or that, which one is it? I'm telling you, we are getting back to business. It's God's business. It's God's purpose. It's God's vision. It's God's desire. It's God's hope. But in order to get there, you got to get quit playing with that. Yes, you got to quit playing with that. Yes. Oh, I don't know if I can give it up. Heaven or hell, baby, which is it? Yes, Heaven or hell, which one is it? Which one is it? Which one is it? Which one is it? Anybody else got anything else? So if it's heaven, get to heaven already and stay with that path. I'm almost done. Sit down. If he orders your footsteps, why are you confused in one direction to go? Yes, sir. That's good. If God orders the footsteps of a righteous man, why are you confused on what road to take? Amen. That's because you don't know whether you're righteous or not. You got the Holy Ghost? You live in the Word? You obey in correction? You receiving it and not throwing a fit over it? Or you let the devil tell you, we should leave here. I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm comfortable here. I, I don't know if these people like me. And I don't know if they, get, they talk about me. And they looked at me funny. And, and this one, I, I don't even like them anymore. And they didn't support me in my moment of need. And, and, and this one didn't tell me that I look pretty in my outfit. <laughs> let me be pastor for a minute, okay? Are you stupid or something? That's so dumb, you spit your own Cheerios and walked around demanding who it was. Right. <laughs> Don't you understand, God is bigger than your attitude. Right. He is bigger than your thorn in the flesh. Right. He, Paul didn't go, I gotta quit, I can't make it to heaven, I've got a thorn in the flesh. Because if he had, we'd be missing some books. That's right. yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah. For sure. But you got a thorn. Uh -huh. yes. Read what Paul said about his. This thing almost takes me out. But you got a thorn. It hurts. Paul got a thorn. Oh my God. No, I'm okay. No, I'm just going to keep preaching Jesus. No, 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 don't touch it. Don't touch it. 
We've already sought, tried to get rid of it so many times. Not coming to leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Wow, the Pastor Troy. I'm not sure what to throw shadow. I'm making an example. Quit getting holier than thou and all righteous and dignitary. Okay? Those are on the scribes and the Sadducees. They don't visit here on these days. <laughs> See, I told you I wasn't going to. And not bragging. That's just I get in trouble with God. Y'all go ahead. Got the sword in the flesh. Don't touch it. I'm serving God anyway. Don't touch it. I'll still go to prison. Some of y'all think God's going to let you go to prison. You will walk away. I'm just going to be the biggest, fattest person in prison because God, God turned his back on me and let me come to prison. That means some of y'all ain't gonna make it. Because I'd much be more willing to go to prison for Jesus than follow the yellow brick road that this world tried to paint for me. Uh huh. I, I would much rather answer the door and invite the angels in than go out with the crowd hunting the angels down. Oh, you're being extreme. No, you don't understand what side you're on. Yes. Because you are either on the one side that's trying to protect the angels, yes. or you are on the ones on the outside trying to get the angels. Yes. Amen. You have better understand what the role of good and evil really is. Yes. Yeah. Right. Amen. Hmm. I'll go a step further. Good never would have stepped a foot inside him in the first place. Oh, he's going to go there. Sodom had every evil known to man. All of them. Do you know how many were an abomination to God? All of them. We go to one hook, oh, no, nope, not nope. he taught him in Gomorrah. We know what he's talking about. Yeah, I'm talking about how stupid you are. <laughs> Sodom and Gomorrah is every sin known to man. Which one are you playing with? Which one are you justifying? Which one do you think is just close enough to the fence to where God won't get too mad at you? There's no longer a fence. Yes, that's right. Very true. There's a golly between hell and heaven, and you'll be asking God just to quench the thirst with one little drop. And you know what he's going to say? Did you hear something? Wow. Don't you get it? When heaven and hell is, is, is a done deal, God's not hearing your prayers in hell anymore. God's not coming to your rescue. There is no resort. I'm not saving room for anybody because I'm not going. Amen. So all these is, I'm going to hell anyway. <laughs> oh, you're big and bad here, but wait till sickness and disease hits you. You'll be buckling like a little baby. <laughs> oh, what happened? Yeah. You're big and bad. Right. You got this. Come on. Come on. No, you don't. Brother Stephen, would you walk up to a big old boy, big old boy wearing that leather jacket, has a tattoos tattooed on the side of his head and neck, has that big old long sleeve of Nazi symbolism? Would you walk up and go, you need Jesus? Oh, you shaking your head, I don't think you would. I'm being honest. <laughs> would you? I think no, you definitely would. Cameron would be like, I still do it. I'm going to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> you know what? Sister Schiller go do it. She put all y'all say. Yes. What do I got to lose? I'm just going to go tell him he's going to hell. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta stop that! You're gonna burn in hell! You need to come to church! 
How come? What do you say? How come? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So now you know when you're out and about, go tell somebody about Jesus. What do you got to lose? Them not going to hell? I'm telling you, you need to get back to business. Yes. Whose business? God's business. You need to be quick being about yours, and you need to be about his. You need to quit getting distracted and disturbed and stop. Get off the internet. Yes, you don't have a TV. Thank God. Yes, Are you telling us to get rid of our TVs? No, I'm telling you to quit making your TV your God. Come on, come on. All right. Well, I study. Here's how you know if you're studying right. Can I do this? Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, now that you know that, are you studying? Yeah. So you can rightly divide all truth. I can't bring one false religion and bury you right now because I'm ready. You ready? So I can quote from your Bible and convert every falsehood that you've been told not to believe as if it were true. Can you honestly use all those scriptures and prove me wrong? I got people who have been in church for years and years and years going, no. And I got some of y'all have haven't been here long going, oh, I can do it. I can do it. Be careful. Be careful. Because the devil tries to come in, doesn't he? And change one little thing. Oh, that, 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 yeah, that sounds like it goes in because you were quoting the other scriptures right a few minutes ago. Okay, so they're on the up and up. No, they ain't. Right. They quoted those scriptures right, so that they quote this one wrong and get you on the team. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. That's how psychotics work. Right. How do you know? It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Study to show thyself approved unto God. Right. Didn't say pastor. Right. Yeah. Didn't say the congregation. Are you studying enough to show yourself approved unto God? Right. Now can you answer yes? Right. A workman that needeth not be ashamed. Right. Have you studied enough this week that God's not ashamed of you? Mm -hmm. Am I hit home now? Rightly dividing the word of truth. It did not say learning another religion. Right, right, true. Come on. That's true. It did not say finding out what somebody else believes. It says you rightly divide the word of truth. Right. Yes, sir. Yeah. It didn't say go argue with anybody. It said you learn it and you love it and you live it. You ready for the, the last thing that I'm going to say on that? What's the Bible say about truth? What's it say? Anybody? Come on. I had people shaking their head. They know all these scriptures. Tell me what the scriptures I'm looking for. Huh? That's one. There's another one. There's something about it. I ain't got it for sale. Anybody picking up on what I'm saying? Oh, yes. I will buy the truth and sell it now. Amen. You know what you buy it with? Everything you got. Amen. If you got the truth and you start going around to argue with other people who don't have it, you are literally going up and saying, yard sale. Yard sale. 
by the truth. It doesn't mean monetary. That means you give yourself to God because he's already paid the price. Right. And don't sell it. Don't sell it for your attitude. Don't sell it for their words. Don't sell it for what they thought, for what they said, or how they thought, or how they said it, or how they look, or what they tried, or what you think they meant, or when they meant it. But I feel in my heart if you come up to me, sis, and you say, Pastor, I feel in my heart I'm going to give you a nickel for it. Why? Because the heart is deceitful in all of its ways. But I feel in my heart not interested. But I believe, not in resting. No, the truth is the truth of Set you free. Right. But I, I believe in my mind. It's okay. Go back to sleep. <laughs> know the truth and sell it now. Amen. What are you telling us all this? Why are you been stepping on our toes? You've been slapping us. Is it just to make up for over a month? <laughs> if you didn't have your voice for weeks, uh -huh. and you couldn't walk, That's right. and you couldn't raise your arm like this, Come on now. do you think it's just to get back? Or do you think you caught a fire? Because you ain't going to let nobody work. I just, you know, so I just started living. Yes. I found me a brand new life. Yes. Changed my direction. Uh -huh. Washed away all my strife. I'm a newborn believer. Yeah. It's a holiness feeling. Roads are getting lighter. Days are getting brighter. Just started living. Yeah. I love that word. Don't you look at me funny. Your prophet of doom ain't one bit discouraged, Amen. ain't feeling no gloom, cause I got God's spirit, yes. and it's totally thrilling, yes. gave up on doubt, got no time for pouting, <laughs> I just started living, <laughs> amen, <laughs> let's all stand together tonight. Church, my responsibility to you tonight is to tell you to get back to business. All right. yes, sir. Not brawling, not squalling, not pointing fingers, not missing prayer, not missing praise, and not missing activity in the house of God. Yeah. My responsibility, whether you like it or not, is to hold you accountable. Not only is my job to be on the wall to see when you're in danger, but my job is to watch when I'm on the wall whether you're up to no good. That's true. Or whether you're on the path you're supposed to be on. From the wall, you can see when you're going into the wrong person's house. When you're hiding in dark places. Isn't it funny every time you get depressed, you shut the lights out? Or you hide in your room or some other place that nobody else bothers you. Yeah, right. Oh, wait, that's the spirit of what? Man, I can't wait for y'all to get the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I feel like I've taught this. It's a spirit of depression yeah. and oppression yeah. trying to get all over you. Uh, Go spit in the Cheerios. Resist the devil, he must flee. Oh, that was easy. The devil flees. The problem is you keep thinking about what he said. Come on. All right. Amen. All right. Very true. But if you were rightly dividing the word of truth, Come on now. Right. you wouldn't have been listening. Right. Come on now. Amen. 
We'll say something to this church. If you've never had a Bible study all the way through, not the first couple. You ready for this? Because you ain't going to like it. If you've never had a 100% Bible study all the way through, you're not in the will of God. You're not. Check it out. There's that dignified spirit I've been waiting for. How about you bury that thing with the rest of it? How can you say that? If you don't know what you believe, I do. No, you know pieces, parts that you've gotten throughout the services and people are talking about. You don't have all of it. All of it. You know, from Genesis 1 and 1 to Revelations, amen? Yes. Right. amen. You're missing it. So how can you get back to your father's business if you don't even know what his business is? Yes. Right. That's like getting a manual to run the company and only running it off the first two chapters. How'd you go bankrupt? I don't. We sold stuff. I ordered stuff. What, did you order more than you sold? Yeah. Why? Well, I mean, after chapter three, I, I was busy. Right. So you ordered before you knew how to run the business? Yeah. Some of y'all are trying to run a business. And you haven't even learned how. I've been in this a long time. You're still out of the will of God. Deal with it. I'm not changing that. <laughs> you don't know all the business. That's why you're afraid to talk with anybody else when they really get deep into the word. Oh, no, no. I just want to stay in Acts 238. Back up. Well, then you ain't in God's will, are you? Aren't you supposed to be the Christian rightly dividing the word of the truth? What are you saying? I'm saying get back to business. Right. Get back to God. Get back to God. To be honest with you. If I've said anything and it's spoken to you tonight, there's no reason for you not to be at the altar. None. So we ain't playing no music. Either come and serve God or don't. Here, you need something? Here. Praise God. Pray through. Come on, be honest with him. Tell him what you did wrong and what you need help with. He's not a dumb God. He said, ask and you shall receive. Speak to him like you got common sense. Pour it out before him and communicate with God. And then listen. And if you don't get it now, pray tonight. Pray when you get home. Pray when you wake up. Keep praying. Ask and what? You shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open to you. You've got to learn to ask God. Communicate. That's prayer. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Lead us, Lord. Lead us, Lord. Show us, Jesus. Show us Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we repent. We repent of our laziness. We repent of our awkwardness. We repent over not praying and not studying and not fulfilling the word of God. In your name, Jesus. In your name, Jesus. 